you'll often hear the expression now that every company is a software company. And so if that's true, who's building that software? Where are those developers coming from? Every company right now has a huge innovation uh, agenda. Every company is facing, you know, Honeywell was a thermostat company. They kind of invented the thermostat. Their new competitor in thermostat is Google, right, with Nest. So every company is trying to figure out how is software and applications disrupting my industry? How is it creating opportunities? How is it creating new relationships between me and my customers, and my partners, and my value chain? So every company is wrestling with it, wrestling with this right now. And it's exciting because great new apps and great new experiences are, are coming out of it. So you have a talk that's titled, it's, tell me if I get this right, Designing for 100, 100 Million Developers. 100 million. All right. What does the industry look like when you have that many developers? Well, nobody knows, but it looks different than it looks right now because it's on the order of 10 or 20 million professional developers right now. So the next 80 million isn't going to look the same as the, the current 10 or 20 million professional developers. And we as architects and we as leaders have to go figure out what are the technologies, what are the practices, how do we be really inclusive, how do we make sure we are bringing in all the people that have talent to offer and tools that they can actually use so they can participate in this revolution of apps and innovation. On the flip side of that, what does 100 million developers mean for consumers? Uh, what does 100 million developers mean for consumers is a great, is a great, is a great question. I, I think the biggest thing is consumer expectations have moved forward at incredible levels, and they expect to have a really personal relationship with every brand, and they expect to have great app experiences, and they have no patience for things that are lame. So consumers are going to force every company to unlamify all the things. But, but it also means consumers are going to start having a really direct voice in the development practices. You know, they're going to be pulled into focus groups. They're going to give feedback right in the app. They're going to have feedback through their cases and their call centers and everything. You know, I think companies better be ready for a whole bunch of really intimate conversations with their end users and their customers of what they like and what they don't like. So is the consumer expectation the thing that's going to catalyze the need for those 100 million developers? Well, if you don't feel like the apps are exploding everywhere, you know, I think you haven't checked your iPhone or the App Store lately because, <laughs> you know, you're getting push notifications of new apps and your friends are sharing new apps with you. Um, I just think we're in a world where this incredible digital innovation is happening, and consumers want it, the users want it, my kids want it, you know, my family wants it, my businesses, you know, businesses want it, but there have to be more makers that can make it, and the best makers are people that talk to their users. So we're going to have more users, more apps, and way more developers. How do you see software architectures changing over the next few years? Do you anticipate a dramatic shift? I think we're in the middle of a dramatic shift in architectures already. You know, we've seen this massive move to the cloud, the massive move to mobile and social integrated into every experience that we have. And I think the tools have moved in a really, a really big way. You know, the rise of really efficient platform as a services, the rise of really rich client side frameworks, the rise of efficient services backends. Uh, we see this in our products. We see this in a lot of other products out in the market. But I mean, it's like it's like Candyland for a developer because you can start with a really productive framework. You can deploy it with like a single click of a button, like a Heroku button, a single click, you're up and live. And so the starting point for an app development is no longer a really long learning cycle. It's you have a first pass and hours or days or something, and then you're iterating, iterating, iterating. Last question for you. Sure. What people or projects are you following these days? Uh, I am excited about uh, all the innovation happening on client-side frameworks. So Facebook has had a lot of uh, news around React and React Native. It's a pretty exciting new client-side framework. Angular's coming on really strong, and there's a big refactor with new Angular 2.0 everybody's watching. Ionic is an amazingly hot client framework. We have our own Lightning framework in the enterprise that Salesforce is really excited about. Um, the, you know, there's all this innovation happening, and like the best part about all this is every developer, every architect is now in a place of the maturity of cloud platforms and client technologies that they can pick whatever is right for their business and get it into production and actually use it. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. My pleasure.